Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. This is Khair Sawi from Khairi BioLife YouTube channel. In this video, inshallah, we'll be studying ecology based tahsil questions. Ecology itself covers four chapters of the syllabus. It's important. Before we get started, let me identify, identify first what ecology means. Ecology is the study of how living things and living things interacting together and the how living things and non-living things interacting. So let's get started. Question number one. The act of one organism consuming another organism. Consuming here is the keyword. Consuming means one organism feeds on the other organism. One eats the other. One hunts the other and eat it. And this means predation. Yes, a predation is a food relationship between two organisms. One is a predator and the other is a prey. Parasitism also is a food relationship, but between two organisms in which one gets benefit and the other gets harm. Commensalism is also a food relationship between two organisms in which one gets benefit and the other neither gets harm nor gets benefit. Mutualism is a food relationship between two organisms in which both get benefits. So the answer is predation. Next, identify how energy flows through an ecosystem in a typical food chain. Food chains always start with a, uh, a cell feeder, with a producer or what's called by autotroph. They are the basic, they are the main source of energy on earth they are the main source of food on earth i mean so they're always the beginning okay autotrophs or, or, or producers or cell feeders like plants and algae then they're consumed the energy they have transfers to the other organisms like heterotrophs which come in many categories like uh, omnivores herbivores carnivores detritivores uh, scavengers and decomposers We'll be talking about these categories later, inshallah. So always the energy flows in a food chain starting with an autotroph. Yes, from an autotroph to a heterotroph. Next. What is a chemical substance that an organism must obtain from its environment to survive? We all, all living organisms, require first food. And this food contains six nutrients. These nutrients are protein, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, vitamins, and their components. All of these are nutrients. So, yeah, we all require, all living things require nutrients to survive. Next, which are biotic factors in a forest environment? Biotic factors, actually two factors are there. Biotic factors and abiotic factors. One starting with A a biotic factor, and the other is biotic factor. Biotic factors are all living things, plants, animals, humans, and microorganisms. You can say microscopic living organisms. The abiotic factors are what the biotic factors need to live, like water, like air, like a right temperature, like the soil, like all what they need to, to survive. So, biotic factors include, yes, plants, and microscopic living living organisms. The keyword here is biotic. The other B, C, D includes only uh, abiotic factors. Next. What is the name for a group of interacting populations? Populations. This is the keyword. Group of populations. Life actually is divided into levels, starting uh, from the broadest, from the most general, to the most specific. And they are. These levels are. First, biosphere, which contains group of biomes, and each biome contains group of uh, ecosystems, and each ecosystem contains groups of communities, and each community can, uh, includes group of populations, and each population includes a group of individuals of the same species living the same time, same area. So when you see here group of population, this is the keyword, group of population. This is the keyword. So now we know it. It's a community biological community exactly 
But in order to choose ecosystem, the, um, the word here should be here, communities. Yeah, group of communities means ecosystem. Habitat is the place where we're living. Which defines habitat. Habitat, as I said, is the where we live. It's the area. The area we live. Yes. An area where an organism lives is the habitat. I'll leave this question to you. Take seconds and answer this question. What type of organism is the foundation, is the basic of all ecosystems? The basic, the number one we all need to survive, the number one of a food chain, the first step? Mm, I think you know it now. Yes, it is. It's plants, it's algae, it's producers, it's self-feeders self or autotroph. All of these words mean the same. Autotrophs, producers, self-feeders, and examples, plants, algae, you can also include some bacteria. Next. How do detritivores? Detritivores are kind of uh, heterotrophs, other feeders. They depend on others to obtain their food. So how do detritivores obtain their energy in an ecosystem? Mm, the food they get is fragments, very small remains of food. The, 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 the decomposers leave after they decay the dead bodies. Mm. So the key word here is fragments. So when we see the tritivores, we choose fragments. This is the key. Next. Which type of organism exists at all trophic levels, except the first trophic level? When you look at this, this figure represents a food pyramid. The base of the food pyramid includes, or the bottom of the food pyramid always includes uh, producers, you can say heterotrophs, you can say plants, you can say algae. This is the basic, this is the number one or the first trophic level. While the other trophic levels or the other steps are for starting from the second level till the top includes heterotrophs. Heterotrophs. The question says which type of organism exists at all trophic levels. Trophic level is a feeding level. Many levels are, levels are there. In this, in this food chain, in this, in this food pyramid here, which represents the food chain, we have one, two, three, four trophic levels. First trophic level always made by plants, producers, or autotrophs here. So, which type of organism that exists at all trophic levels? except the first trophic level, mm. in all, except the first, it's heterotrophs. You see here, the snails, uh, the, the, the turtles, the fish, and this kind of fish, all of these are heterotrophs, are other feeders. What type of organism returns nutrients, return nutrients, return the nutrients back after decaying dead bodies to an ecosystem? Now you know it. It's decomposers. Yes. Decomposers like fungi and some bacteria. They return the nutrients back to the soil so the plants can gain benefit off. And without decomposers, you can say um, no life. Yeah. Because how plants can get, get the, from, uh, how plants can get their minerals if no decomposers returning their bodies into organic matters or into minerals plants get, can get, get benefit off. Decomposers are very important. They recycle. What type of scientists? Scientists studies water found underground. So the scientist who studies water, wherever it is, wherever it is, and underground or in the atmosphere or on the Earth's surface, it's something about here's the key word: water. And water means hydro, hydrolysis, uh, 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 dehydration, hydration. This this word starting with H. So hydrologist. Yes. The scientist who studies about water, called hydrologist. Geologist is the scientist who studies about the Earth's structure, everything in, on Earth. Ecologist, the, uh, the, science, the scientist who studies about uh, the, how organisms interacting. Biochemist, the scientist who studies the, how uh, the chemicals required uh, by the living thing to live, to survive. The biochemical pathways, the, all of the chemical reaction happening within the within the uh, living thing. Which biogeochemical cycle involves evaporation, transpiration, and precipitation? Evaporation is the changing of water into water vapor by heating. Transpiration is the changing 
or is the process by which the plants lose water in form of water vapor through their stomata that are found on the leaves and the green stems. Precipitation is the pre falling of the, sna the uh, snow or rain. The runoff is the, the water flow. So which cycle includes them all? A, B, C includes uh, biogeochemical cycles. So it's all about the water. Water cycle includes them all. Which process in this cycle, this shows a cycle, converts carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. Mm. Plants actually require carbon dioxide and water in addition to sunlight to make their food, which is called sugar or carbohydrates, you can say, producing a byproduct called oxygen as well. This process happens within the plant leaves. Now you know it. Yes. It's photosynthesis. Certain types of tropic or tropical orchids use trees for support in order to grow higher and obtain more light. Thus, neither harm, and this is the key word, neither harm nor benefits the tree. Now you know it. It's one kind, it's one kind of symbiosis, food relationship. It's exactly it's commensalism. Commensalism, it's the food relationship between two different species in which one gets benefit and the other neither harms nor benefits. This figure shows a food chain. Why is the mouse here is classified as omnivore? When you look at the figure, it's, uh, it, it shows that the mouse is a herbivore because it's feeding on, it's, that, sorry, the mouse is a uh, carnivore because it's eating on the grass over, grasshopper. It's a carnivore here. But it's omnivore because not only it's, it feeds on other organisms and grasshopper, but it, because it feeds on also plants, cereals or grains. It's what mouse do all the time. Anyway, so it's an omnivore which, which means uh, feeding on both plants and animals. So this is why the mouse is called omnivore. Herbivore is another category of, of heterotroph. Herbivore means uh, plant eaters, eat plants only. Carnivore means feed, feed on meat or feed on other animals only. But if the animal feeds on both, we call it omnivore. Another question. Which process returns nitrogen to the food web? Return the nitrogen to the food web to other organisms, not to the, not to the soil. So this process called nitrogen fixation, exactly. Nitrogen fixation is one of the very important processes and it's made by kind of bacteria called nitrogen fixers, living in the nodules of some, some kinds of plants called legumes like bean. In the legumes of and the nodules of the bean, these bacteria change the nitrogen dissolved in the soil into a usable form. These plants can use to make their own protein and grow. It's a very important process performed by again nitrogen fixers. Bacteria. These are the very important concepts in this session. If you need me to explain you these uh, words. In, um, uh, I'll give you a brief bout. Please write this in the comments and I'll be responding to this immediately. Thank you.